G'day guys, welcome back. Look, I'm gonna play with my big tray mold today. Now, did you guys see that clock that I made with the timber that I put inside it? Uh, hopefully you did. I have been looking for some more bits of timber. Um, actually, I'm just gonna put this piece of baking paper over my mold so I don't drop bits of bark into it because I've just cleaned it. Um, this is Balinese teak and it was in a big sort of clump um, that I just bought from um, my local buy sell swap online and uh, they posted it to me and I was looking everywhere for someone that could slice them for me in like these are five millimeter slices so I actually went to my local man shed or men's shed and uh, they managed to do it for me. I will put the video in after this little section that I'm doing um, just to show you how we cut it through the, with the jigsaw. So there's lots of different pieces. I, I bought a few pieces of the Balinese teak and so there's all these different shapes. So that one's got a bigger center cut out of it. This one's like a little bit smaller. And I thought they'd be really, really interesting. And there's a smaller one again. You can use e either side. It has got the lines um, from from where it was cut, but look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go and sand them. <laughs> um, it's a very, very hard wood. So you know, once I've put the top coat on, I think it will be just fine. So that one, it's got a little hole in the middle. That'd be cute for a clock. Hey, you could put your clock mechanism coming up through the center. This one's a bigger piece. That was, see the bases are bigger and then as they get up, they get smaller and smaller. So that was uh, another one, that was another one. So anyway, I've got lots and lots and lots of pieces and um, I've chosen the ones that I want to use for today. That one's gonna go there. That one's gonna go there. And I think that one's gonna go about there. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, after I've finished talking to you about these, I'm gonna go and mix up some resin and uh, I'm going to coat these in resin because you can't you can't just pour resin onto fresh wood or you know even though it may be 100 years old I don't know how old it is but you can't because wood any sort of wood or timber is porous so the the air bubbles will come out and you'll be torching forever and ever and ever and they won't stop coming and you'll be torching and you'll actually burn your resin so you have to prep your wood first so I've given it a wipe down with um, a cloth. Now, the other good thing to do is use these air duster sprays. They're really handy, especially if there's lots of little, oh, there goes a bit, see, lots of little nooks and crannies. You can actually, there's a bit there that wants to come out. Needs a bit of a hand. Um, I guess it won't matter if there's little bits in there because the resin will sort of lock them in. You can use this air duster and uh, just go around, clean off any excess bits of dust because it makes a bit of dust as well when it's being cut on the, the jigsaw. Some were done on a jigsaw, some were done on a big circular saw. Um, I don't have a video of the circular saw. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll get on to the next step. I'm going to mix up some resin. I'm going to coat these just very lightly and then let them dry and then I'm gonna go and pour in them. So I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Aren't they gorgeous bits of timber? All right, so I'm back. Mixed up my resin. I am using, I'll show you, this one, my new favorite. Platinum 360 Plus. Um, I, I did buy it in the big kit, 15 kilos, <laughs> but the bottles are really big, so I just pour it into my smaller bottles. It's easier to manage. So I've mixed up one cup. I did uh, 175 grams of A and 75 grams of B, which is 250 grams, which is roughly a cup. Okay, so... I think everything's nice and clean. I'll keep these in the order that I want them, like the little way I want them. 
So you're going to go there-ish and there and there. Oh, look, there's some dirt. Keep your bit of tape close, close by. There's always going to be little bits that fly away. So once you've worked out roughly where you want the pieces to go, now there's a couple that's kind of, see, it's a bit warped. They just, they just warp after they've been cut. So I'm not too concerned about that because it's quite a deep mold. It's one centimetre, which is almost half an inch. And I'll be covering that with, with resin anyway. Um, I was, I had it in, I was kind of going for three choices with the colour. My usual blues, and then either black or white. But I've decided on black with black handles. I think that would look really, really elegant. Uh, and then another time I'm going to do white. But doesn't that just look gorgeous like that? So the first thing we need to do, and this, as I said, it's very important that you coat your resin. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a, a sticky mess because I need to do it just by by hand so make sure you got your wipes look at the color make sure you got your wipes and things ready to go to clean yourself up try and only use one hand if possible so that you've got one non-sticky hand if at all possible look at, look at the difference in the color isn't it amazing now take your time need to go down through the sides there push the resin over let it drip down the sides if you do get any little bits of dirt, you can just get a, a toothpick or a pair of tweezers or something and pick them out. A little bit more. I'm going to turn it over in a sec. Again, try and keep, keep one hand clean. If you need to pick up something, at least you haven't got sticky hands. So, but I'm going to have to use my other hand to pick it up. Pick it up. Well, maybe not. So anyway, once it's coated, there's a bit of dirt in there. We need to pick him up. I do need to touch that. Look at that. Look at that mess you've made. I guess it doesn't really matter because that's going to be on the back, on the bottom. But we do need to coat the back as well. All right, so I'm just going to lay it back down. I need to do this with each piece, top and back, bottom, or top and tail. <laughs> when I did my clock, um, I coated the timber in resin first and let it just sort of stand like that up on its ends for a few hours until it was dry. And then I thought, no, why don't I just do it in the mould and have... A base of resin in the mold so it's ready to go like it's ready to stick down onto it just saves one more step doesn't it so that's what I'm going to do all right so that's coated let go so now might not be ideal but look like I said those little specks there they're going to be on the bottom and you can only notice them now because they're on white but once you look at the back and you notice you won't notice them like on the back of that bit of timber there so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread this resin out along the bottom there put a bit more in and I'm actually going to stick this down on that resin and that will a stop it from floating you know how some people have to put clamps down when they put the timber there when they're doing tables and things like that they put the clamps down but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put down a little bit of resin first um, now I need to torch how am I going to pick up my torch now I need someone else to torch because my hands covered in resin let me just pick up a piece of paper towel. Pick up a piece of paper towel and do it this way. I'm just going to torch that really carefully like that. Now, I think that's the way that I was going to put it. I think. You'll still be able to move it. So we'll just sit him there for a minute while I move on to 
the next piece. And same with the next one, front and back. I'm not going to stop and pause it because, you know, obvious reasons. My hands are covered in resin, so bear with me. You can fast forward. Go and get a cuppa. Now's a good time. Go and make yourself a cup of tea or a coffee or a glass of wine and come back and join me. We're going to have some fun today. I've been looking forward to doing this project. Look at that cute little hole there. It was really, really difficult. I found it really difficult to find pieces of timber or wood. What's the difference? Is it wood or is it timber? I think timber is more like planks of wood that you use to build a house. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I found it really difficult to find nicely shaped, interesting pieces. You know, you, you don't want just a flat a piece of wood that's just got a flat edge, you know? Well, I don't. I want nice, interesting pieces. So same here. I'm going to put some down there. Which way did I have it? Was it that way? I think it was that way. I can't remember now. I think so. I think I've turned it over to do the other side, haven't I? All right, now we'll just spread that out so it's got a base to sit on and that'll stop the air. Stop you, well, hopefully stop you getting bubbles underneath. Um, and it'll leave it in place. So when you come to do your next layer, it's not going to be, you know, floating around and things like that. So put him there. I'll go later on and just pick up these little bits although you probably won't even see those because it'll be having black resin over the top hey with white resin you might see it because they may float up to the top just using my gloved finger to get in the sides there all the little nooks and crannies i'll pour some more over that edge there actually so I thought a cup should be plenty just to, you know, give it a coat on each side and then a little bit on the base just to glue it all down. Didn't want to make up too much. So my next layer, once this has had a chance to set um, for... Hmm, this resin sets up pretty quick, probably even four hours do the other side um, then um, I'll come back so this is gonna be a three layer job this is number one the next layer will be when I pour the black resin in between all of this I don't want the resin going up over the top so I'll be, have to be really careful so pour black resin in just to the top of the lowest point because some areas are going to be higher than others so I'll just pour the resin in really carefully up to that lowest point. Let's put you a little bit of resin in there. Look at that. Hardly, hardly any left. I did well with my measurements, I think. Spread you out. Doesn't matter if you haven't covered everything. You know, your next layer is going to cover it. So don't be too concerned. All right, let me torch again. I'm going to have to give my torch a bit of a clean with some alcohol. Now, was that the way I was doing it? Yes. Okay, now I'll just have a little play to see where I want everything to go. See, I don't want it to be touching the edges. I want to have black all the way around. If I had a piece that had like a rounded edge on it, a, you know, a very round edge, I'd butt it up into there. Um, let me just clean my hands real quick. But I like the fact that all the pieces are quite unusually shaped and I can make a feature of them in the center and then just have a black edge all the way around. I think that will look really pretty, really elegant. And hopefully it'll look really expensive looking. <laughs> No. All right, now the rest of my resin, I'm just going to just drizzle in around and cover the base. 
of that mold because why not I've got a little bit left I can pour it in there we go that is done just spread that evenly now I don't know I haven't decided yet if this is going to just I'm going to do two parts because 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 I've ordered some handles and they're not going to come till next week and I think it's going to be quite a long video so I may do it in two parts this first one is you know how to coat or seal your wood um, and then the next one will be actually finishing off the piece because I won't be able to finish it until next week um, until the um, the handles actually arrive in the mail so I'm thinking I will just do a two-part now I'm just having a look and seeing this is my brain thinking here see this gap here I just want to make sure that's not too close so to making sure everything's kind of equal distances apart that gap there I don't want that too close that bit there that bit there that bit there everything needs to be like equal sort of distances apart and I think that would look nice so I think I think that will do this little pointy bit here that goes in that curve so that looks nice that pointy bit there fits in that curve. This little point here comes down into this curve. Same with these. I've kind of tried to follow the, the shape. Same with these. All right, that's me done, guys. I need to clean up. Um, actually, I'm going to take these off. Be really careful when you're taking gloves off if you've got resin on your thumb. Maybe not do that because you're likely to get resin on your skin. Just do that. Now, I'm going to torch. I've had paper towel on that, so that's clean. Torch again, pop some bubbles. Don't get too close. You know, you've got a silicon mold. You don't want to damage it. So, quick, quick little torch over the top if you're going to use a torch. Um, for me personally, I've, I don't find that the heat guns help all that much with bubbles, but look, that's totally my choice and your choice, what you want to do. I just hope that this little corner here goes over the top because that one's poking up a little bit. So there we go. Oh, I'm so excited. This is looking so good. All right, I'm going to put you on, um, well, I'm going to turn the camera off. <laughs> and um, I'm going to wait for this to set up. Four hours or so. We'll come back. We'll do another coat in the black. Well, actually, mm, I, see, I don't know. I might do it in the second video. Either way, um, if you don't see the end of the video or the um, actual process in this video it'll be in a few days and the reason is because I'm waiting for the handles <laughs> all right see you soon but you can watch that little video that um, I made of them cutting the timber I'm back it's the next day I've made up 350 grams of resin I wasn't quite sure how much to use you know because you don't I'm only filling in these gaps here I'm not going over the the timber so I had a cup in like 250 grams in the first layer so hopefully 350 is enough just to come up to the top of these so I'm going to go with the black. I also thought, what about like a smoky grey, which was almost transparent? 
I've got so many ideas that I want to try, but I'm going to go with the black. So the Lorez in the black. And let's give a nice big scoop like so. This is my big stick. Hopefully that's enough. You don't need a lot of paste. They're quite strong. I'm just going to stir it in over here. I have to remember not to stir like crazy like I'm doing an acrylic pour <laughs> because when I stir that, uh, the paint with my pouring medium, I stir it really, really fast, you know, like I'm beating eggs. <laughs> so I have to catch myself and go, nope, we're not stirring like a mad woman. We're just going to stir gently so that we don't get too many bubbles. I do want it opaque though, so let's see how it looks. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom of your cup. Scrape the stick because the paste likes to stick on the stick. Give it another little bit of a stir. So once this is set, I need to wait for my handles to arrive. They're really pretty. Oh, I love them. So we'll wait till they arrive. I mean, I could go to my local hardware store and just get some plain black ones, but I think I think I'm going to do it right. Well, what I think is right. I'm just going to wait until these other ones arrive because I think they're just really beautiful. Okay, so that looks nice and opaque to me. Alrighty. Here we go. Now, maybe I should be pouring this into... I might actually just get one of those little paper cups and then I can make a spout. It doesn't have to be a, a little, little paper cup. One of these will do, just so that I can make a spout. Let's put half in it. I'm just going to be careful not to pour too much in because then it doesn't pour nicely. Right, here we go. Wish me luck. Now this is the part that's sticking up. This is the highest point here. So I really need to find my lowest point. And um, take the resin up to that. I have to be careful because I don't want to get the black on the top so I might have to get a, like a smaller little cup and just drizzle a little bit into into those little holes I guess if I haven't made enough black that's okay I can just put another layer on hey that's my cup empty all right well, I think what I'll do is I'll just Push some of this in. Actually, I'm going to use my other little duvalaki, this little duvalaki, because he doesn't scratch the bottom of your mold because he's got um, like a, it's like an earbud, like a cotton, cotton wool duvalaki on the top. <laughs> Just want to make sure that it doesn't go over my timber. Let's push those in. Push some of that in there. Now I'm just going to take my time with this, so bear with me. I'm not going to rush it. This is actually this is a really expensive piece because I had to buy the Balinese teak. I had to get it posted to me. I then had to get it sliced. Um, so yeah, all all cost money, and then it's a lot of resin. So I just, you know, I just want to take my time. I just want to do it properly to the best of my ability. So I'm not going to rush it. I need to get some in there and some through here. See this little piece here, a little inlet, it's got a very dark timber. So you probably won't even really see that up against the black. But when I do one of my, my next ones and I do white or maybe an off-white I don't, I don't know what do you think white or off-white um, then you, you know you're able to see it a lot more easily I'm gonna take that black 
around the corner there. Okay, and you need some too, don't you? So I'm using the same resin. It's the Platinum 360 Plus. And once I've done this, I'll give it a bit of a torch, pop some bubbles, uh, and then I'll pour the next lot in on top. Oh, there's a little hole there as well. How am I going to get that in there? A little bit. A little bit on top. Actually, I think that actually filled up with clear because I can't poke it in. I'll just leave it there so that it looks as if it's black and then when the top coat goes on you won't even know that it's like clear underneath yeah I didn't realize I'd filled it up with clear it obviously got stuck in there a little bit of clear resin got stuck in there okay um that'll be all right let me pour some more in here and we'll go again I'll wait till my cup's almost empty and then I'll just drizzle a little bit into those those little holes there. So I'm going to get a piece of paper towel just to catch the drips. I'd hate to drip over the top of my my timber. My Balinese teak. It's pretty, isn't it? So, I'm so happy with it. Okay, so that's kind of the first layer. So let me spread that out and then I'll give it a quick torch. And then we'll just fill it up a bit more. Get in there. In you go. Pushing it in. <laughs> now I know you can't, the, the edges don't really stand out because they're dark edges. And that's, you know, dark, it's black, but... That's the look that I, I wanted for this particular piece. Now, let me see if I can just get a few drops in there. And there. Oops. Okay. Done. Spread that out. Woohoo! Okay, that's the first block done. Now, where's my torch? I'll give it a quick little torch. Pop some bubbles. people spray with alcohol but because this is going to be the top in my experience when I've sprayed with alcohol it's left like a mottled spotty look um, so I'm not going to do it if it's if it's the back if this is going to be the back it's okay but um, yeah I, I have found that when I've sprayed alcohol and I, I get these mottled little spots so I'm not going to do it. Not actually, have you got any gas in you? A little bit. No, nope, you're empty. Why are they always empty when I go to use them? I just want to get just in that black there. I don't want to get on the timber. So these little little ones are really handy. So I've only got a little nozzle, and you're empty too. Why do you always have to go empty when I'm doing a video? So I can just aim exactly where I want it to go with this little one. I don't think they like to be upside down though. I'm going to have to fill him up 
All right, but that's that's pretty good. All right, now I've still got some left. Use it up before it gets too hot. And here we go. Just pour in a little bit at a time. I don't want it to go over the top of my Balinese teak. Just want it to be level. So I'll just add it slowly and gently so that we don't overflow. If anything, I'd rather it be, you know, a little bit lower. Now it looks to me as if this point here, this here, is my lowest point. That there. Because this piece warped a little bit, so it's kind of gone down there and it's up here. So this is, that's going to have to be my my lowest area there so I don't think I can really do any more because I don't want that to climb over the top I better put just a touch more in just do a little bit like I said I don't want it to go over so we'll just take it slowly I'll just do a little bit more and see how Still got all that. Didn't need all that. So 250 grams would have been plenty. 250 for the first layer, 250 for the second layer. Um, I have just made another tray mold. Um, it's slightly different to this one. It's in my eBay store. They're very heavy. They're 1.6 kilos. Um, so if you're overseas and you want one, um, postage will be... I guess quite expensive because it's got to go in the um, up to two kilos satchel. So, but you know, it is what it is. I can't control the the shipping costs. But yeah, it's in my eBay store. If anybody wants it, I'll be using my new one very shortly doing another project. Just drizzling in a tiny bit more. There we go. It's going to go slow, make sure we don't go too full. Keeping an eye on this section just here. See how much we can actually put in without it overflowing. Um, I'm just going to put you on pause. I'm going to fill up my little torches. I'll be right back. All right, so I filled it up. I gave it a quick little torch. Now, I'm going to see if I can just... Push it a little bit more, put a tiny bit more in. Around we go. Actually, this part here as well, this is quite low here. It's about to go under as well. <laughs> little continents aren't they and they're about to go under okay but yeah look they don't have to be it doesn't have to be covered totally up to the up to the top of your timber because you're going to put the clear on over the top so you're not going to know like you're not going to be able to say hey you didn't fill your black up enough um yeah it's it's just going to have a beautiful smooth coat of clear over the top and uh, you know you might like to actually only fill it halfway so that you can see the sides of the timber. So if you were doing um, maybe a beachy thing, you might want to do not fill it up so high so you can actually see the sides of the timber. Make sure that your board that you're on is really nice and level as well. You don't want that to be a problem. Perfect. Look at that. I did check it before. <laughs> I've got one pop stick under this side and two under that side because I know that's what my, my level needs. All right, last little torch. And again, I'm trying not to torch onto the actual timber. Just into that black resin. If for any reason there are any little bubbles or hairs or something that fly in, it's going to be covered by your next coat anyway your, your clear top coat so you don't need to be too too concerned so just keep going keep going keep going with your little torch look he's only tiny he's on full it's only a tiny little flame so you don't have to worry too much about burning anything 
but just keep him moving. Try not to get him onto the silicone sides of your mold. All right, as the bubbles come up, I'll torch again in a few minutes, but that'll be me for now. Look, I've got some, that's empty, but I have got that little bit of black left, so yeah. Um, one cup I should have gone for. All right, let me get you down for a bit of a close up, hey? Um, squeak, squeak, squeak as I undo that. Let me get my, let me turn this ring light off because the black's so reflective. <laughs> Look at that, get over the top. Super shiny, isn't it? There's that little inlet. Oh look, we can see the little island popping through. I wasn't sure if we could or not. Gorgeous colors and textures and shapes in this Balinese teak. It's really pretty. I'm gonna get some more and I'll get it sliced up and I may actually sell it for those that want some. The clocks. Oh, and I got some little pieces as well, uh, little offcuts that um, I'm gonna make some little matching coasters out of. So that video will be coming up as well. So there we go, isn't it looking gorgeous? Gorgeous, gorgeous. Right, so the next layer will be the clear um, when the handles arrive, and then I'll be gluing the handles in. I want them to be decent size, not too small. They don't have to sit on the timber. See, little ones like that I don't think would look good. They need to be nice big ones because it's a big tray. All right, I'll see you for the next layer. Looking good so far. So excited. All right, see you soon. Hey, guys. Look what's arrived, my handles. I'm just going to take you in for a little close-up of the handles so that you can see. Now, they're a little on the big side, I guess, but it's a big tray. The next size was only like half of that, and I thought, well, that's just going to look silly sitting in the middle there. So I went with the bigger ones. So they're black, and they've got this little edge on them, which is, it's kind of a copper color. And I just thought that would look really nice against the timber. It would just, you know, match rather than just have plain black. Um, I was going to use these, you know, which is like a branch look, but um, they're quite small. Oh no, I've just moved the other one. <laughs> I um <clears throat> I measured the distance between those two, you know, to try and get the same distance apart. So anyway, that's the handles. Um I'll put you up on the tripod and we'll get pouring. Put you on autofocus. Now, I know from where you are, it kind of looks as if the handles are doing this. It's, I think it's just an optical illusion. So, just measuring again because I knocked that one. Just make sure that they're exactly the same. Oops, that's 31. And that's 31. Okay, perfect. Should, should make sure that I've got no dust or anything in there. All right, <sighs> give it a little blow. <laughs> um, I had my resin, not not the cup sitting in hot water, but I actually put the two jugs of resin just in the laundry sink um, in hot water just so that they could warm up and degas a little bit. I am just wondering if, you know how because I mix up my resin and then I sip the cup of resin in some hot water, I'm actually wondering if it's causing like a steam um, or a bit of condensation or something and it might be reacting with my resin and sometimes I get that little, you know, like a grease slick look on top. So, um, so I thought I'll warm it up differently this time and see if that has anything to do with it. I hope I made enough. So hopefully the resin will just sort of get underneath those handles. This one up here is sticking up high a little bit because it's sitting on that bit of timber. 
and I don't think I want to scrape the cup if I haven't made enough I'll just quickly make up a little bit more I made up um, 375 grams of resin so the first layer the clear layer took 250 grams the next one in black took 250 and then I made three um, 375, yep. Changing my little notes here. 375, sorry about that. Okay, I'm just going to let that hopefully run. Actually, I probably need to just push it a bit, hey. I'm hoping I've got enough. So be careful not to knock my handles over. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? And I can't drip resin over them either. Okay, hang on. Better do this. You don't want to drip resin over the top of your handles, that's for sure. Let's see if we can spread this out. I have to get ready to go to work in 20 minutes. But I wanted to get this done so that it could set. Because I know you guys have been waiting for part two. My handles arrived yesterday while I, while I was at work. Work really gets in the way, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. Come on, resin, spread out. I need you to just go a little bit more, please, just to there. Just to here. Come on, you can do it. I don't really want to have to make up some more resin, but only because I'm running out of time. But look, if I have to, I will. Because I do need the, um, I need the timber to be covered. There's no point if there's bits of wood sticking up, is there, through the resin. It has to have a nice smooth finish over the top. Okay, that one's done. Let's go over here and tuck all this piece just here. Push that out. Probably needed another 100 grams, I guess. Don't know that I've got time now to make up more. I have to heat the resin again. As long as the timber's all covered and my handles have got resin underneath them, I'll be all right. Oh, that looks like a bit of glitter in there. Oh, where'd it go? It's on my stick. I think so. I think I got it. I was using glitter the other day and it just gets everywhere. Oh, look, I'm done. I've covered it. There we go. I'm covered. All right. Now let's clean my stick and we'll give it a bit of a torch. Be really careful not to knock my handles over. Oh, you're running out. Why do I always pick the one that's running out? Oh, gosh. Hang on. I've got to go and fill it up. See, I shouldn't do these things before work. All right, let's try that again. What do you think of the handles, guys? Let me know what you think of my handles, whether you like my choice. Like I said, I could have just gone with plain black. But uh, I just wanted that little bit of, just something a little bit more elegant, you know? There's a hair. There's a little bit of wood sticking up through there. Might just need, oh goodness, picked up the wrong end of the resin stick. Might just need a little bit of a coaxing there, cover that up. And I can see another hair. I've got a food net, um, but it's been sitting, like it's just been standing in the corner of the room. And I thought I'd put that over it, but then I thought, because it's been standing in the corner of the room, it could be just really dusty. I really should buy myself a new food net and
and um, keep it in a plastic bag. And then when I want to come and put it over something, I know that it's not going to be covered in dust. Because if I flip it open and it just splatters a whole heap of dust on there, that's just going to be awful. So I think I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it and hope for the best. I don't really have anything big. I'm going to, yeah, I'll get a food net and I think I'll go and get like a, a plastic container, a shallow one that can sit over big things. Um, but I am worried about putting putting it over because you know how the resin gets hot and it puts out heat. I'm worried about the heat going up and then causing like steam or condensation and then I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But um, I think maybe a food net is probably the best thing. It's not going to stop dust particles, but it will stop hairs from falling in. I guess bits of fluff. Alrighty, oh gosh, it's looking so pretty. I'm going to bring you down for a close up, and hopefully, um, hopefully it'll stay looking nice and pretty and shiny. Just going to put some alcohol rub on my hands. <clears throat> All right, let's turn that ring light off. Be really careful, I don't knock my handles. Come around here. Um, now there's, oh, it's a bit hard to see. I know, it's a bit hard to see. Nice glossy top there. It's so reflective. Yeah, it's a bit hard to photograph. I'm sorry. It's a bit hard. <clears throat> it's a bit reflective. So there we go. What do you think of the handles with it? Yeah? Do you like it? Hope so. It was worth the wait, I think. Now I just have to leave it there and let it set. And it looks as if, it looks as if I've got everything covered. I can't see any pieces of wood sticking through the top. It all looks nice and shiny. See, if you look across like that, if you've got a window somewhere, you can see that you've got a beautiful shiny surface. Probably couldn't really get much more in that, actually. It's probably, probably really quite full. All right, I'm going to go and get ready for work. And I'll just pray to the resin gods that this doesn't get any hair in it. I'm going to try and find something to cover it, but I just don't know what... I don't think I've got anything big enough. <clears throat> Unless I put some little cups, like a little cup on each corner and then put it like a, a big canvas over the top. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Clean the canvas underneath. All right, I'll do that. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. The time has finally come. Oh my gosh. What a labour of love this has been. It's taken almost a week, mainly because I had to wait for the handles and mainly because I had to go to work, but it's finally time to unmould this gorgeous creature. I'm so happy with the finish. It's just gorgeous. Nice and smooth and shiny. All right, let's get it up. Peel this away. Hopefully it'll just come away really nicely and easily. Like so. Look at that. Now because I haven't filled the mould right up to the top, I've got a tiny little lip there. I guess maybe I should have put another coat on to go over the top. Um, I might still do that because I it's got a little bit of a, a lip there, but... I might do that later. I just wanted to get it out and have a look. The other thing um, also, with these trays, um, now I don't know whether it's got to do with the resin or just because it's such a big tray, sometimes they kind of warp. So I like to either leave them in the mould for at least a week or if you, oh look at that, it's out! Or if you're keen to get it out. Oh, I've just noticed the little area that I've missed with the black. <laughs> oh my gosh. I might have to fill that in on the other side. Oh, look at that. Um, yeah, um, they tend to warp. So, yeah, like I don't know if it's just the brand of resin I was using um, earlier on in the piece. Get that mould out of the way. But, um, yeah, I'm going to put it back in the mould. And um, once I've finished showing you and taking photos, I'm going to pop it back in the mould um, and just let it cure properly so it doesn't warp. 
Um, and then what you can do is, let's have a look at the back. Yeah, not much to see there. And um, what you can do is you can put those little um, silicone sticky feet on the back just to raise it up and also so that it doesn't um, scratch anything. But there it is. Look at that. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Worked out exactly how I wanted it to. Let me see if I can bring it up and show you a close up. So I also wanted to show you the um, the rock edges. Now let me know what you think of, look at that, look at the surface. It's just immaculate. There's nothing, no hairs, nothing, no bubbles. It's just gorgeous. Okay, now let me have a look, see if I can show you. Now see those edges? See how they're not just straight up and down? They're textured. Now because this is obviously black, I'm not going to um, you know, paint them gold or anything. But in my previous trays where I've put black handles on, um, I've painted those edges black. And because it's a geode shaped tray, I just thought it would be nice having, you know, a more realistic geode edge. But I wouldn't mind your opinions. If you can let me know what you think, if you like those rock edges or whether you prefer maybe just a straight edged um, tray mould. Let's have a closer look at these handles and see how they've stuck on. Yep, they've stuck on nicely. And I think that little strip of copper there just matches that timber beautifully. What do you think? <laughs> so happy with it. Let me turn this ring light off. See if it makes any difference at all. Probably not. <laughs> it's just so reflective. It's like it's like looking in a mirror. Actually, probably worse without with the ring light off. So there we go. There she is. And I can pick it up. Woohoo! All right, I'm going to go and set it up outside. It's not very sunny, it's a bit overcast, but I'll set it up outside or do a new, nice photo. Um, don't know about what I want to do with these little edges because they're a little bit sharp. The problem is if you sand them, if you're not going to paint them with gold or silver or copper, I don't think I will. Um, I guess if I was going to do anything, I would just do copper. I can do it later. Again, you let me know what you think. If I should paint these edges in copper to match this little copper strip um, or just leave it plain. If I'm going to leave it plain, I kind of need to fill this a little bit just so that it's a little bit higher so it doesn't have that little lip there. But um, yeah, I probably should have made up a little bit more resin and just filled it up. But, you know, I was in a hurry to get to work yesterday, so I didn't do it. But let me know what you think. Leave them plain. Paint them copper. Um, but yeah, oh, love it. Hope you enjoyed that video and um, I'll be doing more using my nice big tray mould and uh, I'll see you real soon for the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Love you guys. Bye for now.